This is part 73 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to implement autocomplete text box using jQuery and an ASP.NET web service. In part 72, we discussed how to achieve exactly the same thing using a generic handler in ASP.NET. In this video, we'll implement this autocomplete text box using jQuery and an ASP.NET web service. Along the way, we'll also discuss the autocomplete source and min length options. This is the example that we worked with in the previous video session. Notice that at the moment we have set the autocomplete source option to a string. In this case, the autocomplete widget in jQuery expect the string to point to a URL and that resource should return JSON data. So here in this case it's pointing to studenthandler.ashx and this student handler is going to return JSON data back. So if you set the source option to a string it expects that to be a URL resource. So one of the options is to set the source option to a string. In addition to that you can also set the source option to an array. You can set it to an array of strings. So here we have an array with two choices, choice one and choice two. Let's see what happens when we set it to an array of strings. So instead of pointing this to a URL, I'm going to set it to an array and this array is going to contain two strings. Let's call this choice one. Let's include another string. Let's call this choice two. Let's save the changes. Let's go ahead and reload this page and look at this. When we type letter C, we get both the options, choice one and choice two. Okay, so you can set it to an array of strings. You can also set it to an array of objects with label and value properties. So if you look at what we have here, we have an array and it's an array of a JavaScript objects. So we have a JavaScript object here we have an opening and a closing curly brace and this object has got two properties label and value label is set to choice one value is set to value one now within the notepad here I have an array of three JavaScript objects so let's copy that and set the source to that array okay so let's go ahead and save the changes and let's reload this page and look at this, when I type letter C, we get all the three choices and let's select one of the choice and look at what I get as the value, value one. So the label property is what is displayed in the suggestion menu. The value will be inserted into the input element when a user selects an item. Okay, so you can also set the source option to an array, an array of strings or an array of objects. You can set it to a string. When you set it to a string, it points to a URL and that URL should return JSON data. And we discussed that in part 71. You can also set it to a callback function and we'll discuss that in this video session. So let's go ahead and first create a web service. At the moment we have got the student handler and if you look at what the student handler is doing, this is actually retrieving student names from the database. So what I'm going to do is to this project add a new item and we actually want to add an ASP.NET web service. So let's scroll all the way down. So select web service and let's call this student service. And now we want this student service to be called from script so I'm going to uncomment this attribute and we are going to write some ADO.NET code so we need some ADO.NET namespaces in the interest of time I'm actually going to copy that from student handler uh, you know that we worked with in the previous video session so we need these three namespaces system.configuration, system.data, system.data.sql client so let's copy them and paste them right here and I'm also going to copy this ADO.NET code from here. So I'm going to copy all of this code that's present in process request function and paste that within this student service. Okay, and I'm going to change the name of this function to get student names and to this function we are going to pass a term parameter and the type of that is going to be string okay and we're not going to get that using the context object because we don't have that object so I'm going to remove this line so here we have a list of 
string object list student names we are reading the connection string from web.config file this is the same code that we worked with in the previous video session we are calling the stored procedure and the stored procedure has got a parameter at term and we are executing the command retrieving the names from the DB and adding those names to this list okay and finally we don't want to serialize those names so I'm going to actually remove that JavaScript serialization code and instead I'm going to change the return type of this function to list of string and what we want to do is finally return the list of student names so after we loop through every student name that we have got and after we have added that name to the collection I'm going to return this list student names okay so here we have our web service so let's go ahead and build the solution and let's view the student service in the browser. Okay, so let's click get student names and term. I'm going to pass, you know, letter M and let's invoke that and look at we get, you know, we get all the student names that start with letter M. Okay, so our web ser service is working. So all that is left is to invoke this, um, you know, from our jQuery code. So now to this project, I'm going to add a web form. So let's go ahead and add a new item. Let's add a web form. And in the interest of time, I'm actually going to copy the HTML and jQuery code that we have in webform1.aspx. So I'm going to copy all of this actually, except, you know, this page directive. I'm going to copy the rest of the code from webform1.aspx and paste that on webform2.aspx. Okay, so we have the text box with ID, txt name, and we have the ready function wired up. So here we are calling the autocomplete function on this text box. Okay, and at the moment the source attribute is set to an array of objects. Okay, now instead of that, I actually want to set that to a function. So associating a callback function with the source option gives us the maximum flexibility. And this function is going to have two parameters, request object and a response callback function. Now the term property of the request object contains the value the user types into the autocomplete text box and to the response callback function, we will have to pass the data to suggest you know, the user names to the user. Okay, so let's look at that in action. So I'm going to associate a callback function um, with the source option. So this function is going to have two parameters, request and response. And this request object is going to have just one property uh, and, the, and that property name is term. And what is that property going to contain? Now whatever you type into this um, you know, your uh, student name text box, that will be present, you know, in that property, okay? So we can use request.term property to retrieve the value that the user has typed into the text box. So now what I'm going to do is use the jQuery AJAX function and issue an AJAX request. So let's use the AJAX function and let's configure the options. So the first option is going to be URL, the URL that we want to call. So in this case, we want to actually call the student service. Okay, so let's copy the name of the service. So we want to call student service.asmx and within that we have a function, get student names. So that's the function that we want to call. And we want to issue a post request. So I'm going to specify the method as post. And I'm also going to specify content type. So I actually want to send a JSON data to the server. So the content type is going to be application for slash JSON. And let's also set the character set. So char set equals UTF-8. And since we specify that, we are going to pass JSON string to the server, we have to convert the data that we pass to a JSON string. And to do that, I'm going to use the data option and json.stringify method. 
So here we're going to pass a JavaScript object and this JavaScript object is going to have term property because that is what is the name of the parameter that we have here. So term colon and where is the value going to come from? The value you can retrieve that in two ways. You can retrieve that from the text box itself so you can basically use uh, you know find the text box and then use the val function on that. You can do that if you want but we know that this request object that is coming into this function will have term property which will contain the value that the user has typed into that text box right so I can use the request object and the term property of it okay so that's the data that we are going to send to the server and the type of data that we are expecting back from the server is JSON when the request completes successfully we want to associate a callback function so this function is going to receive the data that the server is going to send and remember you know the data to this you know whatever object that the server returns by default it will have a property d attached to it right so if we want to retrieve the first uh, you know student name for example we have to use data dot d dot name right okay so what we are going to get back is actually you know an array of student names so now this function has got another parameter response this actually represents a callback function so I want to pass the data that I retrieve from this web service to that callback function so that's a function so I'm going to call that function and pass the data so data dot D okay and that is going to take care of showing that names as the suggestions within that text box and then if at all if there is any error we want to associate a callback function and display the error message so alert error alright so that's all there to it let's go ahead and save the changes let's actually build this and run it so at the moment we are navigating to webform2.aspx and look at this when I type letter M we still get our suggestions and when we type letter J we get the names that start with letter J so you can set the source option to any of these three array string callback function and we have also seen how to use an ASP.NET web service and jQuery to implement autocomplete feature in an ASP.NET web forms application now what is this min length option so this option specifies the minimum number of characters a user has to type before a search is performed so at the moment notice that when I type the first character the suggestions are displayed immediately now if you don't want that for some reason for example let's say you know you want the search to be performed only when the user types at least two characters that's when you can use this min length option so here along with source option I also want to use min length option let's set this to 2 for example in this case let's save the changes reload this web page and look at this when I type M you know I don't get any suggestions but as soon as I type letter A look at that a request is sent and I get the suggestions back so here we have the web service code and here we have the HTML and the jQuery code Thank you for listening and have a great day.